Hey, you miscast miscreants, and welcome to another episode of Miscast with your hosts, the wonderful JJ. Hey. <laughs> the magnificent Greg C. Oh, yes, I'm here. And yours truly, William Davis Moore. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the chopper! Shut up to my left friend! I'm going to make it run off again. This is my You're going to need a bigger boat. If you're new to the channel or the show, together we have a combined 30 plus years as film critics, film writers, film app creators, film book publishers, Ooh. and side cinematographers. Wow, that's, that's sexy. <laughs> and if you're new to the show, please head on over to our channel and uh, check out some of our past episodes so you can get all caught up. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the bell so you can get uh, caught up and notified on all of our latest epic, amazing episodes. I don't know if the bell's down here, over here, or what. It's, it's around it's in that somewhere. area. I think yeah. it's over here. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, all right, so let's get into it. When diplomacy and military options fail, call in the Special Forces team, Overwatch. Overseen by John Malkovich, codenamed Mother, he sends out his kids led by Mark Wahlberg, a.k.a. Child One, to do the dirty work. When an ex-cop delivers himself to the embassy with a coded disc containing the locations of deadly radioactive substances, with the ultimatum of getting out of the country in exchange for the code to the disc, it is up to the team to take him through 22 miles of hell. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so. Wow. Can we just give an applause That sounds for like that? an awesome movie. I know. I des- a lot better than it really was. I deserve an Oscar for that one. Uh, for all you guys uh, listening out there um, on the podcast, uh, there were visuals to that, so it wasn't so cheesy. There were actually like pictures of Mark Wahlberg and all that shit. There was actual so. video. <laughs> yeah, there was actual video. He's wearing a red flannel shirt. Was he wearing a red flannel shirt? Constantly. <laughs> he was shooting guns, I know that. Yeah, he constantly had the same red flannel shirt. <laughs> the entire movie. He's the, he's the one, shirt mark. one shirt mark. One shirt mark. <laughs> well, right. It was over the course of one day. This movie, right? Maybe. Maybe it's possible. Think. Yeah, 22, 22 miles. Twenty two miles. Yeah. Don't take that long. No, no it was like yeah. three days. So the the movie was directed by Peter Berg, director of uh, a bunch of movies, and he played yeah, Alice's should. asshole ex in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it starred Mark Wahlberg as James Silva, aka Child One. Uh, it was his fourth film with Peter Berg, who also uh, did Lone Survivor, about an unsuccessful Navy SEAL mission, Deepwater Horizon, about an oil drilling station catastrophe. It was lame. And uh, Patriot's Day. It was also a true story. Uh, it was still lame. So was Patriot's Day, <laughs> which was about a actually. really true story uh, at the Boston Marathon bombing, but uh, I don't think anybody really saw that either. Um, it also starred... Lauren Cohen, who's uh, Maggie from The Walking Dead. Yeah, that's a very nice lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and fun fact, she played the famous Martha Wayne in Batman v Superman. Oh, one of the greatest movies of all I time. I didn't see that. Martha! Oh. You're, you're lucky. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see Batman v Superman? No. Oh, my God. Did you, did you see Justice League? Oh my god! No, I haven't seen Justice League. Okay, you, you, you're not missing. Anything. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I heard it was really crappy. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, well, that mm-hmm. was. Okay. Uh, and it had uh, everybody's favorite, John Malkovich, yeah. as James Bishop, aka Mother, with the worst hair piece <laughs> I've seen in a long time since the last Nicolas Cage movie. Isn't it funny they didn't mention him in the trailer at all? They you, yeah, you saw him, right. but they never mentioned him. Yeah, which is kind of weird because, I mean. Before, when a John Malkovich movie would come out, everyone would be very excited. I was like, oh, shit, John Malkovich yeah. is in this. I'm going to watch it now. Yeah. He was probably like in his contract that, like, don't name me in that damn trailer. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think, he's, I think he's fine with getting that paycheck. Otherwise, he wouldn't do this movie. Yeah. He finally he saw the movie and was like, you know what? Uh, just don't mention me in it. <laughs> it paid for his hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a newcomer, uh, Eco Uace. I hope I didn't butcher that freaking name. Probably. I probably did. Yes. Uh, he played the martial arts master Rama from uh, uh, the Raid series. Yes. Yeah, he was in the Raid. The Excellent movies. Yes. Which 
you got what you need to check out. I know for three years you have been telling me to watch that movie, and I still haven't got. I have it. seen it, and yeah. that's amazing. It is right. It yeah. is amazing. All right, I'll check it Both out. Both of them are good. You know who was amazing? Who was amazing? Ronda Rousey from uh, Rousey. Rousey. Who's Rousey? Yeah. I can't Rousey. pronounce shit. No. <laughs> it's no. like Henry Cavill. <laughs> Henry. Instead of Cavill. Insert that clip. <laughs> no, Where's that clip? No, no, Cavill. No, more, no more clip. Henry Cavill. Uh, Ronda Rousey. Uh, Sam Snow, aka Child Three. She's a MMA badass. Oh, uh, Ronda Rousey, yeah. yeah. No, Ronda I'm Ra- sorry. I thought Ronda you were talking Rousey. about the, uh, the other guy. Oh, the, I don't The know. fourth member of the team. No, he's not in my list of people to yeah, mention because he's, he's, he's an unmentionable. Uh, <laughs> but she's a Fast and Furious alum. I think that was the first time we saw her horrible acting. Yes, anytime she's in a movie, it's guaranteed to be <laughs> shitty. <laughs> yeah, she, well, she wasn't really called on to do much acting in this movie aside from point to gun and... Look mad. Yeah, talk about goats for about 10 seconds. Yes. Goats. Movie. Yeah. Goats to my goats. All right, JJ, I'm throwing it off to you. What is your preliminary summary of this movie? It was uh, very disappointing. I mean, this is definitely not the, the Eight Mile sequel that we were hoping for. Not at all. Um, it was a gigantic piece of... Let me check my notes here. Yeah, what does it say? <laughs> oh, uh, crap. Uh, <laughs> the movie stars uh, Mark Wahlberg as a mentally unstable genius, which is already miscast you can't have mark Wahlberg as an expert in anything yeah. uh, especially when it relates to things of the mind uh, the, <laughs> in the opening credits of the movie we actually learned that um his mother along with his two twin brothers died in a brutal car accident and um being you know the only survivor of that and this has nothing to do with the movie as nothing else in the movie has anything to do with the movie itself <laughs> But we learn there that he's a genius, and because of these events, he has these like really horrible anger issues. Mm-hmm. That um, <laughs> there that, it is. That really lead to nowhere. I mean, the so mo- that's not distracting, is it? No, no, no. not at all. <laughs> uh, the movie is just filled with uh, poorly choreographed fight scenes and probably one of the worst street shootouts in movie history. Wow. So, for the audience out there. I think uh, we did you guys a great service by watching this movie so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but we told you to watch it before we did the review, so you kind of screwed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sorry. Don't. Well, yeah. Well, we want we wanted to see how their reactions match up to our reactions. Yeah, you know? comment below with your reactions, by yeah. the way, so we Tell can like, engage. Tell us how bad you thought the movie was, yeah. too. <laughs> uh, Greg, how about you? Yeah, uh, uh, I pretty much agree with JJ on that one. It was I wanted to like it. Um, when we first talked about going to see it, I didn't realize that it was a Peter Berg movie. And when I found out, I was like, oh, this is, like, this is going to be an editing nightmare, this movie, because, and it was, you know, it was just, you wanted to like the action. I wanted to like the, even the shootout scenes, but, uh, just the way that they were filmed, you had no idea what the logistics of anybody were, where anybody was really standing and the fight scenes. Okay. Ego Uwes, I don't know, I guess that's how you say his name. Um, he's in these great, uh, the r- great raid movies and Marintau, all these, he's a, a martial arts genius. He choreographs all his own scenes and everything. And they were filmed so close up in that chop suey kind of fashion, that Jason Bourne kind of fashion that you couldn't tell what was happening, you know? And it was such a disservice to this guy's martial arts abilities. Right. And it was really disappointing. And that's what I was most mm-hmm. excited for about this movie. Like that fight scene in the infir- infirmary right. could have been really incredible. Um, and I, w- I was actually just watching some behind the scenes footage of that where if they just put the camera, you know, further back and just further back and just let him work and just film him working, then uh, that fight scene would have been incredible. Uh, as it was, it was just filmed too close up. You just couldn't tell really what was happening. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg, or sorry, John Malkovich's hair was absolutely ridiculous in this movie. Um, Mark Wahlberg's little rubber band snapping. Let's hear that in the mic. <laughs> uh, was so distracting, you know. And even the conversations, the close-up shots were just an editing nightmare just all over the place. And uh, yeah, I... For those reasons, I dislike this movie. Uh, it could the, the action could have been good, but you know, just the way it was filmed was pretty pretty god awful. So hell no. So no, it gets uh, you know two out of five 
Say hello to your mothers for me. Well, it was great to meet you. Say hi to your mother for me, okay? Uh, well, my opinion is uh, pretty much you guys covered most of my opinion. Um, I got to say that uh, uh, Wahlberg's character and Cohen's character kind of had the same voice. Like, to me, I mean, as a character, not, not as, like, an actual voice. Like, they were written like, as the same character, it seemed like. Every time she spoke, it could have been totally the dialogue that the uh, character of Mark Wahlberg was speaking. Like, they said the same things. It was confusing. I'm not you. You're pretty close. The, uh, the uh, Lauren Cohen, though, I thought was an amazing, you know, actress in this movie. I mean, she got shitty dialogue and a shitty role, but I thought she, she I could see her in a, in a role as a, like a real action star and a good, a good. She movie. was one of the better parts of the movie, even though her whole storyline was totally just unimportant to the yeah, movie. Exactly. Um, I agree with you guys. The close ups, man. We saw it in XD, so the close ups were even worse. Like no. I had to, I couldn't lean back anymore into my, into my chair. I couldn't squish the tin cushion <laughs> enough to get away from like Mark Wahlberg's teeth. Uh, <laughs> which I constantly saw because it was always his yapping ass mouth, uh, which was also annoying. Yeah. And that rubber band, every time he snapped it, I, I wanted to punch something. Uh, after like the third scene of him snapping that thing, I, I was losing my shit. Yeah, like I, totally I, it was taking me out of the movie. I was, I couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, the action was really good. It kind of could have been like a heat kind of action mm -hmm. scenario. Uh, the sounds and everything were really nice. But the way it was edited and the close-ups and the choppy shit, I mm -hmm. couldn't tell what was going on. He never cut to what they were actually looking at when they were firing their weapons. So I, I couldn't get a, an idea of like any kind of danger. Uh, there's bullets flying and like close-ups, and, and it, it really bothered me that I couldn't understand what, who was fighting who. Mm -hmm. uh, when people got, there was no love for any character because all the characters were so similarly written that when characters were dying, I had no like. I didn't, I didn't ha have any emotional response to anything like, okay, they're dead. Good. Move on. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the way that's another trope for you. Right. And the way that they played it off in the movie, uh, it made you feel that way. He's like, he'd walk up and be like, all right, you're going to die. Good. All right. You was great working with you. I'm out. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, uh, I'll just wrap it up real quick. Uh, the suicide scene was a total cliche that I've seen 18,000 times. Yeah. And I felt like everybody's shooting guns all the time until old boy's got to have his ninja scene. Then everybody's bullets stop working, uh, and then everybody's got to start fighting. They, you know, like the the guns just vanish. They they didn't even say where they went. They just vanish, and he's got ninja his ass out of that scene. And um, my my biggest pet peeve, I think, with the whole thing that really pissed me off the most was they made Lauren uh, Cohen such an amazingly strong looking character, and then when she finally had a chance to show it in that fight scene. Uh, it was another damsel in distress trope right, where yeah. she got beat up yeah. and smashed around and the big boys had to come in yeah. and rescue her. And I yeah. was like, what yeah. the? I, this is bullshit. I found like, that odd in, in this yeah. day and age. Uh, that That's not what I was expecting. Right. Yeah. Right. It was, it was like totally ass backwards. Like she should have kicked the shit out of that guy. I thought when you saw the glass in her hand, you know, it was going to be like, all right, now she's going to do some ninja shit. But no, uh, he beat the shit out of her, and it wasn't until Wahlberg and his buddy comes running in, they saved the day. Uh, I'm, I don't know. It wasn't unnecessary. It ruined her character at that point. Yeah, and I then the ending was totally destroyed because of that, because I was like, well, she's a pussy anyway. Like, uh, Damn it, JJ. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> I did nothing. <laughs> you broke the set. The falling apart. What kind of... Uh... It got pissed at my rant. So. Yeah. All right, I'm going to throw it back onto the what, table, you guys. What so kind like... of two-bit operation are we running I, here? I don't know, man. <laughs> is, you know, where's Marky Mark when you need him? Well, the gel stayed put, so yeah. we're good. But listen, guys, uh, in all honesty, subscribe. We need money so we can build a better set and... Provide a better show. It's going to a good place. It's going to a good to, cause. It's got a good cause. Yeah, those yeah. Home Depot clips can only go yeah. so far. <laughs> this little thing here fell off. <laughs> and this is important. This is crucial, guys. Yeah, I know. It holds without the, it, you know, without, JJ's we, we light no is, not too, is not too good. And then without <laughs> this, that. This is awful. Yeah, we, can't, we can't work without one of these things. Right. <laughs> Uh, nipple Snap clamps. that shit. Snap that oh, shit. That's, uh, oh, it's my Wahlberg thing. Yeah, it's your Wahlberg. Yeah. For the rest of the show. You got the rubber band. You got your snappy snap. I hope you're adding in sound effects to this. Yeah, I'm going to throw in like an Indiana Jones punch. Yeah. I'm going to put this on my nipples. Do, do it without the sound effects so I can put the punch in. Ooh. There it is. <laughs> Jones style. There you go. I'm going to throw it off to JJ. He's got like some bullet points he wants to run through. Well, I want to talk about the ending of this movie. Yeah, the ending was kind of just a setup. 
the ending was uh, there's like this twist where we find what out that uh, Lin Newer is actually like uh, he was the mastermind behind this whole thing that triple he was agent. really like the, the bad guy this like triple agent but it was such a crappy way to do it like wh when, when the movie ending when the movie ended you had this sense of just loss that you just wasted 90 minutes of your life because it wasn't rewarding at all right. and i started thinking about what other movies have really done this well and there, there's really two that come to mind and uh, the first one is so there's three ways to trick the audience okay number one you need a great performance mm -hmm. and the best example of this is the usual suspects mm -hmm. so in the usual suspects we have um the late kevin spacey mm -hmm. He he pretends to be like this really like incompetent. Did you just say the late Kevin Spacey? Well, his career is dead. Yeah, I mean, okay. his yeah. career is dead. Do you really <laughs> do you want to know what he's doing on a couch right now? No, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, because he, he might get a lawsuit for that one too. He might as well be dead as it far as I'm <laughs> So <laughs> Kevin Spacey pretends to be this uh, character named Verbal Kent. Yep. And there's no way at the end of the movie when you find out that all along he was the mastermind and the movie kept giving you clues along the way that it's like it's really awesome what happens at the end you know like you're like oh my god he got me total surprise total surprise it was awesome and anybody who says they weren't surprised but that is a bunch of bullshit because there's Boys. no way you could have right. known i saw kobayashi and i knew it right from then right right i've heard that so many times <laughs> the other Boys. way is with a really great script and there you have the prestige okay. the prestige is a movie that tells you hey listen we're gonna trick you mm -hmm. and you're and watch closely and you do watch closely but they still manage to trick you mm -hmm. and that is great directing and that's a great script. Mm -hmm. In this movie, they, they incorporated a style that I call lazy Bush League bullshit, <laughs> which is essentially... Is that a technical term? <laughs> that's a technical term, <laughs> which essentially means we get the third act and we just chop it into pieces mm -hmm. and we just don't show you stuff and tell you, hey, guys, guess what? You got tricked. Right, right. Well, I, it, it, I remember in the beginning of the movie, there was some kind of throwaway line that they did try to foreshadow some kind of twist to it. I don't remember exactly how the line went. Yeah, I know what you're talking it, about. But it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't certainly wasn't as clever as any of those other movies that you right. that you mentioned. So now, did you understand what was happening with Wahlberg inside? That there was a room that he was in. He was wearing a suit. Yeah, that he was, was being interviewed. That was supposed to be, uh, and I found that jarring as hell. Where right. they all of a sudden went into this. They flash kept cutting forward. to it every ten minutes. And what it was was just his debriefing after the events of right. the movie. To his boss. It to, was his, to his bosses yeah. or whatever. But it was so, yeah. it just came out of left field right in, you know, a third of the way through the movie. And you're like, what the hell is going on? What the hell is this? Well, it took yeah. a little bit to understand what well, was Well, they kept bringing up that scene like every, I would say like 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. So like sometimes you're watching a, an action sequence and then it just cuts. Yeah. To a yeah. Wahlberg sitting in an office wearing a suit, you yeah. know, uh, talking to someone. Right. Do we want to talk about the, uh, real quick, the say hello to your mother for me? Oh thing yeah! The all end, right, all right. Oh Jesus! That to me, in my opinion, that was the biggest troll I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. It it as soon as the character said it, you automatically think about Andy Samberg mm -hmm. and Saturday Night Live talking to a goat. Takes you out of the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree, and it was it it was just it was distracting. Another distracting element to take you out of the now. Movie. What what the scene was trying to do was trying to tell you. Um, so e Eco's character mm -hmm. knows a little bit more about what's happening in Overwatch. Mm -hmm. He knows that John Malkovich is called Mother right. and say hi. But there wasn't a better way of doing this that no. doesn't bring say back hi to your a, mother for me. a Saturday Night Live yeah. episode. Thanks, Goat. Talk to you later. <laughs> say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> How you doing, Partridge? How you yeah. doing? I just saw hey, that chicken. for the first time today. Where's your yeah. fair tree? Yeah, William had no idea what we were talking about when I said to say hello to your mother. He's like, he's like yeah, I don't get that. It's like, all right watch this but you, you guys get this yeah i mean or you probably everybody not this. named william moore gets this everybody yes everybody yeah. knows this except for william i give this movie two rubber band snaps out of 112 <laughs> oh damn it this movie's a gigantic waste of time yeah. yeah gigantic waste of time uh what's the only interesting and entertaining part of this is watching all the characters pissed off yeah but even still that is not enough to warrant someone spending time watching 90 minutes oh, of this yeah, shit. Yeah, definitely don't go to the theater for this one. Yeah. You know? I'll give it three out of uh, 100 and whatever you said. Um, <laughs> just because uh, I saw potential if it was directed yeah. well. Yeah. I saw it could have been a good good thing. 
Yeah. Uh, but you know, because Wahlberg does good shit. But no, it was it was crap. It was really bad. And I'm sorry, guys, because like the last three movies we've done have been like bad negative reviews, and I feel like. Uh, we need another Mission Impossible or something so we can get some positivity going on this Let's set. Watch a good movie <laughs> well, what are we time? doing next yeah. week? Next week, are we going to do the uh, Happy Time Murders? Yes, most right. definitely. I, I don't have high hopes for that one. I do. Yeah. I do. I, yeah. Man, the trailer looks funny, but I have this inkling, this little feeling that says those are the best jokes in the movie. Wow. It yeah, could as be. trailers usually do. You yeah. want some dirty cotton? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> no cotton. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Miscast. Later. And uh, hey, like always, go over on to our channel and hit that subscribe button. Uh, smash it if you uh, need to and hit the bell so you get notified when we release episodes, which is basically uh, every Monday and every Tuesday. Sometimes it shifts if uh, shit gets wild. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we're shooting for. <laughs> shit gets wild. Um, all right. Wild that's shit. it. That's it. What's the shit. what's a closeout that you guys hate? Bye. See you in hell, scumbags. See you next time. We'll catch Bye, you in the next YouTubers. video yeah. later. Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> Deuces. I have it. What should the net in the banet look at? Small movie. Arrow. Arrow. All right. We're hot. These are the moments that will end up in the end of the show. <clears throat> like that, y'all. <laughs>